Hey guys, Jim here, and let's do something a little bit different for a change. Those that have been following my channel for a long time know that I really only do knife videos, and particularly very high-end custom knives. <clears throat> Lately, I've kind of gotten into a few more things, and I do like to share my passions here with, uh, with my viewership here on the channel. You guys have seen me expand into doing a few of the spinning top videos. Had a lot of fun with those. And now, as I'm starting to get a little bit interested in flashlights, I wanted to kind of share that with you as well. Now, I am no flashlight expert. Please don't think that I am. I just want to kind of give you my feedback on the things that I like or dislike about a few of the lights that I've picked up. Now, for me, it's going to be about something that is unobtrusive. There are some amazing lights out there, and I haven't really, you know, gone full force into it like I have with knives where I'm spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on a flashlight. It just hasn't gotten to that point for me yet, and I'm not saying that it won't. I'm just not there yet. So I'm looking at, number one, affordability, and number two, portability. What I mean by that is some of these amazing lights that are out there that you can spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on, while there are some that are tiny, they're, you know, the, the more performance generally, the larger the body is going to be and the larger the head is going to be. And some of those you can interchange it by, you know, put different heads on different bodies and, you know, really cool stuff like that. What I'm going to share with you here today is what I think the perfect EDC flashlight size and again take all this with a grain of salt it's my personal opinion and as I grow into experimenting with more and more lights I may find that I have different likes and dislikes in the future from what I have right now so you may agree or disagree with the things that I'm saying but I'm looking at this as purely a layman's explanation of what I look for in a flashlight. The first thing for me is going to be the size. I carry enough stuff on my person that I don't want to be encumbered by a big flashlight. Now I, I realize I could get far better performance, a thousand lumens and more, in a slightly larger or much larger flashlight. I don't have that interest. What I want is something that I can very discreetly carry and it doesn't feel like it's in the way. And let me tell you why that is. Let me give you a brief description. In my right pocket, that's my knife pocket. Nothing else goes in there. No change, no coins, no fucking pry bars or bottle openers. Because I could be carrying a three, four, five thousand dollar knife in there, and I don't need to bang it up any more so than I would through use. I certainly don't need to bang it up just from carrying it in my pocket with something like this. So that is reserved only for my knives. My left hand pocket is going to be the key fob to my car and that's pretty much it. I may carry a lighter in there. That's really the restriction that I have. So to add a large flashlight thrown into that pocket or even clipped to that pocket sometimes may not be the best route. Uh, and then obviously my rear pockets are used you know, for my wallet, my cell phone. So what I want is something that's small. Generally, it's going to be carried in my left front pocket or left hip pocket, however you want to refer to it. And I usually prefer to have a clip. The other light that I carry on mostly daily basis, and not really daily, but if I'm going out at night, I don't have a need for it in the office during the day, is generally going to have a pocket clip, and I can clip it to that pocket. And that's the reason I want this kind of size. I don't want it so long that it's getting down there with my car key. Uh, basically, I don't want it to remote start my car when I don't want it to by hitting a button or unlocking or locking the car or setting off the, the horn and the lights. Uh, so I do want something that's small. And this is going to be that. Uh, the size on this, it's 2.7 inches. This is the Maritech. Let me give you the uh, close up there. It's made by Maritech. This is a very small, all stainless steel body. The previous light that was made like this was done in, I believe it was either copper or brass. And I'm not the kind of person that wants something that's going to age in patina. I, I buy nice, shiny new things because I want them to stay nice, shiny, and new. I don't want to have to continually upkeep them to make them look like that. So when I saw that this was done in stainless steel, I got very, very excited about it. Um, these are available exclusively on MassDrop. And as I've talked to the folks at MassDrop, and I've, I've had a wonderful uh, chance to build a relationship with them, and that's going to allow me to start reviewing different types of things, not just knives. 
um, when we talked about this, I said, you know what, this, this is probably pretty much the perfect thing for me. It's small at 2.7 inches. It's fairly lightweight uh, at 3.14 ounces, which is about 89 grams. It's going to be easy for me to carry. Now, it doesn't have a clip, but instead you have this lanyard slot. So you can run a small lanyard through there, drop this in your pocket, leave the lanyard you know, hanging out of your pocket. You can grab it and pop it up. This is going to be a twist style and you access the modes by how many times you twist it. So your low mode, which is almost like uh, reading by candlelight, uh, is going to be 50, I'm sorry, it's going to be 2 lumens. So it's very, 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 very dim. Uh, as you pop it up one more, you're going to get quite a bit stronger. And that's going to take you to 55 lumens. That's going to run for five hours at that setting. Uh, at the two lumens, well, let's say you're, you're, I don't know, you're camping for the night and you want to read a book or something, you would put it on that low power mode and you can run that for over 200 hours. That's pretty impressive. And then you take it one more and that's going to be your full blast 300 lumens and that's going to run for about an hour and a half just like that. Now, a lot of the lights that I've experienced, and again, I have not experienced a great many of them, running on your high power setting, they'll only run for a few minutes and then they'll kick down uh, to somewhere in between the medium and the high. Uh, so far as I've seen with this, it stays at that high setting. Uh, you've got an orange peel reflector in there. Uh, you have an XP G2 Cree LED inside. It's the R5 LED. And you have a glow ring in here, which is great. So if you've been using it, it's going to illuminate that ring. It's going to charge up that ring. And when it goes off, I don't know if you can quite see it here. I've got a lot of light going on. You know what? I'll just kick my lights off for a second. And you should see it glowing there to use as a locator. And it's actually going to stay illuminated for a, a fairly decent amount of time. One of the interesting things I found out about this, if you get it just right, see, so kick it back here. So it's not making full contact with the battery. And then all I've got to do is pull on it. One, two, three to get to full power. And as long as I'm holding it, I'm in good shape. I let go, it turns off. So low, medium, and high can be accessed without actually having to twist it. Now, twisting, it's not a difficult thing. But it'll take you some getting used to when you're doing that. So we we'll go to medium and then we'll go to high. Nice and bright. Now, since I really only do knife reviews, not flashlight reviews, I've never taken this camera outside in the middle of the night. So I have no idea how it's going to record, but I'm going to take this light out there uh, tonight and give you an idea of the, the pattern for the light and how well it illuminates a, a given area. Now, what I've noticed is quite a bit of flood, so it actually spreads quite a bit. It's not a very direct beam. So, this is going to be good for, you know, you're walking through that dark parking uh, garage at night on your way to your car, and it's going to be, it's definitely going to be good for lighting up that area and letting you see what's going on around you. And it does take a little bit of getting used to, to, there we go, to get it to fire the way that you want it to. But overall, for me, this is a great choice. All stainless steel, beautifully polished. Let's give you some nice close-up looks at it. There's the orange peel reflector. I guess it has a little bit of a tactical purpose to it. Because you, know, you see the EDC lights, then you see ones they call tactical lights. And they'll usually have little crowns or divots done here so you can mash it into somebody's soft spots and, and uh, hit the pressure points or jab them in the eye or in the throat or something, whatever. Um, so it's got a little bit of that, but it's not really pronounced. You've got a nice grip here. The body has a really, really nice grip to it. Um, and I think that's what really works well for this, having that really heavily knurled barrel. Even though it's tiny and you can see how small it is in my hand, you still feel like it's, it's pretty damn solid. Back it off just a bit. Boom, boom. So I, I feel confident in being able to keep a hold of it even if my hands were a little bit wet. Now, the company that actually makes Maritech is called Countycom. 
And I'm just going to read a little blurb that is on Mastrop's website about them because I've, I don't know much about this particular company, um, not being an aficionado, as it were, on, uh, on flashlights. So they say, County Com designs and manufactures products for federal, state, and local U.S. government agencies and military personnel. Meritac is its brand for goods available to consumers. With a large collection of military spec battle tested tools, including watches, pry bars, flashlights, pens, and packs, Countycom has established itself as a reputable manufacturer, with many of its products being utilized in the line of duty around the world. Now, I don't know how much of that is marketing hype and how much of that is true, but if their parent company is making uh, military grade or military specific equipment, I'm going to have to assume that the quality as it trickles down to their uh, consumer products is going to be fine as well. When I look at the fit and finish of this all the way around and I feel it in the hand, I personally feel like it has a great degree of quality. Now while I may not be an expert on flashlights, I can make the same comparisons in the fit, finish and the material usage the same way I would break it down for watches or for knives which are the you know the two areas that I really live in uh, pretty much everyday life and I can say that the uh, component quality here is great the fit and finish is fantastic very very well made and as you see it's going to use one CR123 battery you can use whatever battery you prefer um, I'm going to end up putting a rechargeable battery in here just to make my life a little bit easier. I think, yeah, you can see it's already, even in this very short distance here, you see it's already spreading quite a bit. So when you, when you really go out there uh, and you're throwing this light for 100 yards or so, you'll notice that it has a very, very wide beam, very wide pattern. Uh, but it is intense. One of the other things I noticed is it doesn't really get too intensely hot you will definitely feel a warmth to it but it doesn't seem too intense obviously I'm not putting my my fingers onto the lens here but as far as holding the body if you were actually walking around in the woods and you needed to have this lit for a long period of time uh, it's not going to grow uncomfortable in your hands so that was a uh, a nice little thing that I noticed as I was kind of playing with it so you've got a three second memory that it resets so uh, as you're scrolling through you're going to be able to access each of the three modes fairly quickly but if you stop on one for a while uh, it's going to kind of stay there as far as the packaging uh, it's it's fairly basic packaging it comes in a nice uh, plastic case with a clear plastic lid you open it up this is sitting in foam and they give you one extra o-ring i would prefer to to see them actually adding the little lanyard to be included here because of the specific size of this opening you're not going to use 550 paracord you're going to have to find one of those very very thin lanyards or you're going to have to take the center threads out of 550 and then find a way to get that sleeve to get through that little opening so you may not have a proper sized lanyard accessible to you at home and you may not even know where to go buy one so it would be really nice if the company threw that in I would think it can't cost them more than a few pennies even if it cost them 25 cents uh, I think it's a, it would be a nice convenience feature just to have that in the packaging so that it's ready to go from the second you open the package instead of having to rifle through your drawers and see if you have one or have to go out and buy one so that's just my two cents on that particular topic I'm impressed with the fact that you've got such a tiny light that's easy to carry and you've got a pocket full of lumens. 300 lumens is more than enough for an everyday need. Now if you have specific needs and you're out there in pitch blackness and you're trying to survey a large area and, and you want to throw further, yeah you may want a 500, you may want a 900, you may want a 1000 lumen light but I don't know and there may be but I don't know of any 1000 lumen lights that are this tiny. Uh, I do have another one that's about this size from uh, another manufacturer that's 500 lumens in aluminum and then when they made their titanium model which I also have I don't know why but they dropped it to 300 and from 500 to 300 it didn't really bother me all that much I thought oh man I'm gonna lose a lot of performance here just to buy uh, a light that I like the look of but once I got it 300 was totally fine for my personal needs again I'm a very suburban guy um, I'm not out in the wilderness 
I'm not out looking for trouble. I'm not, you know, a, a masked vigilante that's out in the city in the alleys at two o'clock in the morning looking for, uh, you know, ne'er do wells. I'm a regular, normal, average, everyday suburban guy. So the times that I might have to whip out my light, maybe I drop something between the seats of my car, uh, maybe I've got to pop the hood and do something under the hood and it's nighttime, or I've got to change a tire, or I've got to find something in my trunk. This is the kind of light that I'm going to need. And I probably wouldn't even be cranking all the way up to 300 anyway. I'm probably just going to go to the medium setting because that, 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 that's, that's strong as shit. Let's do this. Let's turn off my lights here. That is bright as all hell. We bump it down again. There is your low setting. There's the medium. And I think that's going to suffice for most people unless you're going for distance. You're going to kind of back the light up here. There we go. It's great for charging loom, though. That only takes a couple of seconds. So, uh, good high performance. Let's get the light back on here. In a tiny little package. Now, for the money, they've, they've uh, mass drop, in case you've never shopped at mass drop, and I've only done it a couple of times, basically the more people dogpile onto a deal, the lower the price is going to be driven. And then it gets to a certain point where it's cut off and it's at the lowest price it's going to be. This, in the past, I think 48 hours, made it to its lowest price. So this is 45 bucks, 44.99. I think you pay a couple bucks in shipping, I don't remember. Um, so, in my opinion, it's a good value. For $45, it's not made of aluminum, it's made of all stainless steel. You've got a high quality LED, you've got 300 lumens, you can back it down to, uh, th uh, I'm sorry, you can back it down to 55 or to two. It's a nice size, it's a nice weight. For me, it's a great deal. You may be able to find something from another brand name that's a little bit less, but I don't know if you're gonna find the fit and finish level. I mean, this is, I mean, it's a beautiful looking light. It has a nice attractive design to it. The way they've milled this almost looks like a um, revolver cylinder, which I kind of dig. Uh, you've got this nice heavy knurling here on the body. It's just really easy to live with. And I like having that locator ring in there. I know a lot of lights have it, but it's new to me. I think it's kind of neat. So for me, for 45 bucks, I think it's a great deal. As, as I would always tell you, shop around on a regular consumable product. Um, but you're not going to get the stainless steel version anywhere except for Mass Drop. So you have to kind of look at that and go, well, I've never shopped at Mass Drop before, but I really want the stainless steel. That may be the way that you have to go. And I don't know if they have any further uh, future additions being made. I'll put my vote in now. I want to see this in titanium. If we could take a half an ounce or probably a full ounce when you think about it, because this is a little bit over three ounces, I don't see why you can't take a full ounce off of this going from steel to titanium. Damn, that would be awesome as hell. And the only critique I have is, come on guys, pony up the extra nickel and uh, give us the leash, give us the lanyard in the packaging just to make it a little bit more practical. So them's my thoughts. Please give me some feedback because uh, you guys out there that really deal with flashlights a lot, I mean, there are entire YouTube channels dedicated to reviewing flashlights and they know what they're talking about and, and they have fun with it. And I'd love if, if you have any things that maybe I didn't cover here that you need to know about, please let me know and I'll make sure the next time I do a light review that that's included in there. Now, at the end here, I'm going to try and take this bad boy outside and see how it uh, lights everything up. Wish me luck. Uh, if, if, if you don't see a nighttime shot here, it's because I failed. So you'll have to live with what I did in here. Anyway, guys, I will see you on the next video. Well, here we go in the pitch black darkness. It'll be a little bit quiet because I don't want to piss off my neighbors. I don't know, maybe a flashlight shining into their bedroom window will piss them off. We'll find out. So let's take a look now. You can't really see my hand here, but we're going to take a look at the low light setting. Barely any light there, but we can see an object close by. This is about, uh, I'd say about eight, nine feet away. Flash up to the middle setting. And we see this is actually ample for lighting up a pretty wide area. And then the 300 lumen setting 
that allows you to see pretty much everything uh, in your direct path of travel. And as you see, we can light up the neighbor's house. Well, you can't quite see it. The camera's not up there. Let's take a look. So I'd say not too damn bad, good performance for such a little light. There's that glow ring we were talking about a little bit earlier. Definitely stands out a lot better now here in the pitch black darkness. And with that, we'll go ahead and end the video.